Mr. Yes sir. Mm. <laughs> Mr. Inzer habari yako? How are you doing? Very fine. Very eh, fine. karibu sana. Welcome to Ride Free with George. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Today Kabisa, today we <laughs> Exactly. Today we have the legend. And if you watch rugby, if you watch rugby folks, you know this is your mentor. Huyo ni baba yako. <laughs> Mr. Collins in Zera himself. Habari? Thank you. Thank you. Karibu sana. Eh? Habari hapa? Yes. Asante. What made you realize that rugby the rugby is it as a sport for me? Uh, I can say it's back in in high school when I started playing rugby back in 2001 when I had joined high school. Um, I can say that is when I realized that this is the sport for me. Because I, I used to play soccer kitambo when I was in primary. Yeah. And then uh, when I joined high school, I joined rugby. It was kind of a funny way because I, I joined rugby because I was very impatient. <laughs> and like I said, golf is really teaching me how to be patient. So it's a good thing. So I had joined high school, nikaenda kwa kiwanja ball. Tukapala tukuko for ones wengi kila mwana ku join soccer team. Nikaona hii Mr. Yazara nayo na mimi siku hapo na hiyo mambo ya kupanga line, kungoja. So nikaamua kutoka then I was leaving nikaona there was a group of guys wanacheza rugby huko nje. Eh? Nikasema acha tu ni join because I think kuna hii ndio hii sport yenye bro wangu alinishow anacheza. So the moment I walked in there my first touch of the ball that was it I got hooked because like I said I really love challenges. I really love to be challenged as well so for me and then rugby ni kapara it, 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 it's very competitive because unapata kuna big men kuna small men kuna watu fast kuna watu slow so kuna all aspects of all those people hapo ndani so for me nikaichukua za challenge na sijawahi look back since then let's talk about sports in kenya what okay the first question i have what is the common misconception people have about rugby now rugby players in kenya I think people when they hear about rugby players and rugby all that I think that comes first to their mind is ah these are guys of party <laughs> happy and all that stuff and uh, I think until until you get into that yeah. circle I think that's what you'll always see and that's what I think people will always see and always think about because I think rugby players and just rugby in general guys really work hard when they when it before before a game during the practice session guys really work hard and when they go for that I, when they want to let loose maybe after a game and that we also go hard on that so i mean it's it's a biggest misconception in terms of just guys thinking that we are these um rough guys uh yeah party animals and all this kind of crazy crazy stuff but i think when you get into into the inner circle and when you start understanding the rugby the rugby fraternity i think that's when you'll understand more about rugby and rugby as a sport in general it's a very gentleman's game yes guys might think it's very rough and very cruel but i think when you get to mingle with the players and also mingle with the players with the, with the, with the rugby fraternity and fans as well yeah. you'll find that it's very guys are very intellectual in, in in the rugby area and guys are very very humble and guys are, are quite good as well now that we are talking about rugby as a sport yeah. we are talking about how it's organized you've been in mwamba yeah. loyal to mwamba after ulinzi yeah. after you left ulinzi how is rugby how 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 much in terms of money does it pay well when you join a particular club how does all this work um you know what is the whole mechanism when it comes to payment um, and all that yeah to be honest like i said, like i told you i've been in mwamba all these years um yes i'd say we have clubs that you, that pay their players we have clubs that now are turning into professional clubs uh we have the likes of cabras kcb those clubs, I think, they are, they are going the next level. They are going to that level where they are getting players just to play, to play rugby. But I think um, it's not in Kenya. It's not yet fully professional. Uh, I think when you join the national team, that's when you start getting a, a couple of um, money here and there in terms of allowances or salaries or bonuses. I think that's when you get to experience that whole lot of uh, a, a professional kind of setup. But I think from club level, um, very few clubs. I think clubs. Nowadays, what or what has been happening is that clubs usually entice players with um, job creation, job opportunities. We we'll find clubs paying school fees for their players. I think it doesn't have to be monetary um, kind of cash 
transact, pay me, I play. It's kind of uh, you come play for Mwamba, then we'll pay, maybe you negotiate, we pay half of your school fees, or sometimes we get a full scholarship, or you get a job opportunity um, working for either one of the sponsors of the club. So it has been that kind of that, um, um, I can say, nipe ni kupe. But not, it's not that at Ile uh, hard cash, I play, I pay you at the end of the month again. Yes, I think, like, like I mentioned, I think two clubs, KCB and Kadas are doing that, but I think many of these other clubs, what they are doing is, they are giving out allowances, yes, maybe during the weekend when you play a game, you get like uh, allowances for the week, which will help you come for training next week. But it's not that really fully professional in Kenya. But when you join the national team, I think that's when you get, maybe to get this kind of bonuses, when you get, sign your contract, that's when you, understand, you start getting to that level of, of professionality. Now, when you join now the national team, yeah. you're in the sevens team. What is your training schedule like? Is it year round? Uh, yes, I'd say I'd say yes, because when you join the national team now, you have <laughs> you've added on to your responsibility, because you have to play for the club as well for you to be chosen to the national team, and then you have to show up in the national team as well. So the training schedule is is usually quite intense, because sometimes you find yourself training from Monday to Saturday. The only day you are resting is maybe on a, on a Sunday, because Monday. You are the national team, say in the morning from 5.30 a.m. You are there training till around midday. Then you get home. Um, club sometimes in the evening you have to show up for club club duties. You go to training club. Tuesday you do the same thing. Maybe Wednesday you rest for the national team, but club really still needs you. You go for the club. Thursday is the same thing. You have to be there for the club. If you want to play on the weekend, you have to show up for Thursday training to be able to get selected. Then Friday you play, you train for the national team as well. Come Saturday, you play for your club. So it's all this high, that's why you're selling up. You're used to these high intensive workouts and high intensive lifestyle that when this pandemic actually hit, it's, it's quite stressful. I know I think guys, some other guys are really fighting hard for them not to go into kind of this pressure because they are used to this kind of lifestyle. So I think for us, like I said, the training schedule is quite, it's quite tough. And you know, it's, it's like all year round before, because before the season starts in December, you need to have started this training at around August, or, or, or October, somewhere there. So for you, you have to do your pre-season right, then get into the season, then by the time you're done with the season, the club uh, schedule is still ongoing, so you go back to the club, so it's kind of just circular and going round and round and round. With the national team, yeah. what is the compensation like? Can you, for that one year that you're playing for them, because you, you have to do tryouts again, Cindy, every yeah. year. Yeah. yeah. Can somebody make a living out of it? I mean, is it something that's discreet or you can divulge? Um, I can, I can divulge, yes. Yeah. I think uh, you can make a living out of it. You can make a living out of it. The only, I think, the only issue, and to be honest, I'd say, would be maybe the, the part of job security. Because yes. uh, you find us signing contracts for a year, or at most a year. So, because sometimes the season is usually a few months, from December to around April. So sometimes you'll find the contracts running out at around Ju July, Apple, July. So you'll find maybe players um, during that July period and before we can start our season. There's that couple of months that guys are free, not knowing what to do. And that's why it's always advisable for, for us as rugby players to find something else to do. Even if it's school, even if it's jobo, Yes, try and work out, try and balance. I know it's pretty difficult for some people, but it's, it's very, it's highly advisable that you don't only depend on it. Because if you see, you'll, you'll be started on a salary, let's say from um, October. Then you're used to this salary. By the time you get uh, to around June, July, Apple, it's cut off. Where do you start from there? Now maybe you come to So it's usually advisable even for the young guys who are coming up. Don't just think about coming to play rugby. Yes, it's a good thing to have that dream to play for the national team. Come play for the national team, yes, but do not forget to find other things to do. It doesn't have to be necessarily be... You can have your side hustle. But you are saying, yes, maybe some people are not um, able to do so. So find something else to do that will be able to supplement your salary. And if you can manage to balance rugby and something else that you're doing outside there, I think it's a good thing and it will be very important for you to be able to to supplement Naitaku's idea. But I think what you can get from the national team, yes, you can live off it and you can live a comfortable life with it. 
So I won't lie at Nimbaya, you can live off it. But only that you need to get something else to do so that you can be able to supplement it when the contract ends. So that's, those are one of the things that we are still in discussion with the rugby union. At least we'd want some job security. At least if guys are signing a contract, like sign a contract of at least three years or even two years. That way, you can as a person, as a Jipanga, which we, by this time, I can't remember a contract. If it won't be renewed, I'll be able to move on to other things, or I'll work hard and make sure it gets renewed. So for us, I think, yes, to answer your question, I think it's something you can live on. I think what you, there are two important things you mentioned. The first, for the first one, was education. You mentioned education, and and clubs do support in education, depending on what arrangements you have with them. Yes. Uh, the second one, you said, find something else to do. You graduated from Daystar. You, I think you have a bachelor's in Mascom. In uh, PR. In, in? Public relations. In public relations. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, in public yes. relations. Yeah. So what, for you, outside of rugby, what are the other things that you engage in? Uh, outside, outside rugby, um, like I said, uh, like, like you've mentioned, uh, I graduated from Daystar. Yes. I have a, a degree in public relations. I have practiced a little bit, not that much because of the... <laughs> national team schedule yeah. as you know I've been I've always been in sometimes out yes but not for like a whole I think it's only last year that I, that I was out for a whole season but um, I've been practicing as well I've worked as well uh, I think the last time I worked was when um, 20 that Olympic year 2016 that's when I quit okay. after that I decided to move on to other things um, I've always dreamed about doing farming and uh, it's something that I, I decided in that time let me just start let me just do farming and uh, I've always dreamed about doing pig farming and at the moment that's what I'm doing I'm doing pig farming oh, nice. yeah and of course because of the rugby rugby I can say rugby has really helped me out in terms of just elevating me in the society as well and uh, I've, I've managed to get a couple of gigs from corporates um, do adverts for them do a little bit um, of stuff for them and in return get paid for for doing that so for me I think that's what I'm doing. Um, I haven't gone and back to the employment yet. <laughs> Maybe soon I will. But I think I'm enjoying what I'm doing at the moment. So, but who yeah. said you have to? You don't have to. Exactly. You sometimes you don't, sometimes people <laughs> think that if you get here, you really have to go <laughs> back into employment so that you can fill that yeah. gap. But for me, I think I'm doing farming yet. It's, it's quite challenging. But I think it's something that I would really want to really focus on and keep doing it as I continue to grow my, my personal... My personal um, environment as well.